Hi friend, this is Dr. Apoor Mehra. Over next 30 minutes, we will try to do the core of orthopedics. Why I thought of this session? Are these the only 100 points that we are supposed to remember? Absolutely not. There are things which are around it. But what I am trying to create is a visual in your mind so that if you remember these 100 areas of orthopedics and you again revise this video which we will put at the end on the YouTube so you can have a quick grasp of important things. It will also let you imagine things around the base. So when you think about Agra, you think about Taj Mahal. So let me try to create the Taj Mahal and the Agra for you. So we start going now. Orthopedics, number one point. Orthopedics means straight child. This term was coined by Nicholas Andre, who is also called as the father of orthopedics. Point number two. H. O. Thomas. He is the British father of orthopedics. His nephew, Robert Jones, is the father of modern orthopedics. But if I have to pick up one name, just one name in history of orthopedics, it will be John Chanley, the father of joint replacement, one of the commonest surgery done in the world now. Point number three, x-rays are usually the first radiological investigation done in orthopedics. It can show you a glimpse of almost everything in musculoskeletal system except the cartilage. Point number four, next in the world came CT scan. It is very good for calcification, but apart from that, musculoskeletal system is controlled by MRI. So if I have to make a guess, as the investigation of choice, my answer will be MRI in majority of the things in orthopedics. Remember, when you have to look at the gold standard, tissue diagnosis is the most important. Specifically, if you're looking for the infections and if you're looking for the tumors. Point number six, today the incidence of metastasis is going up. So if they talk about multiple metastasis, pick up PET scan, but if they talk about osteoblastic mets in the bone, for example, prostate, think about bone scan. Point number seven, talking about periosteal reaction. Whenever the bone gets irritated, it will start throwing the reaction, the periosteal reaction, the three reactions, which every student of science should remember. The sun ray appearance, the Codman's triangle and the onion peel appearance. And they are usually indicative of a chronic process and for MCQ world, more indicative of malignancies. Point number eight, infections, that is osteomyelitis. The first investigation done is x-rays, but the first investigation that becomes positive is MRI. Remember that. Point number nine, osteomyelitis spreads hematogenously, affects the metaphysis. Staph aureus is the most important organism, except when sickle cell anemia is there. Remember Salmonella. Point number 10, chronic osteomyelitis means the dead bone, called as the sequestrum. Also remember, when you remove the sequestrum, underneath the live bleeding bone comes. This is appearance of Paprika sign, repeated neat questions multiple times. Point number 11, multifocal osteomyelitis. They've been asked in 2019 and 20, neat exam. Multifocal osteomyelitis, remember the SAFO syndrome or even sickle cell anemia is known for it. Point number 12, flexion, abduction and external rotation. Faber, flexion, abduction, external rotation is seen in synovitis of the joints of the hip or the infections. It can also be seen 
in anterior dislocation of the hip joint. Whereas flexion, adduction, internal rotation is seen in arthritis involving the hip joint or the posterior dislocation of the hip. Remember, hip dislocates posteriorly more common. Point number 30, one three. Peronychia is the most common infection of the hand. It infects the nail bed. Whereas, felon or whitlow infects the pulse space. Organism is staph aureus. Remember that. Point number 14. Tuberculosis will involve the spine, the hip and the knee in this order. In the spine, it will involve two contiguous vertebras. This is called as the paradiscal involvement. And also remember, whenever the spine compression is there, it will be first the motor and then the sensory and at the end the bowel bladder involvement will occur. Tuberculosis of the spine, there will be loss of curvature of the spine, whereas TB in the hip, because of more blood supply, will cause osteopenia or osteoporosis. When we look at the TB spine, the treatment is going to be anti-tubercular therapy and when indicated, you operate. This has been called as the middle path regimen. Point number 17 in hip, remember it starts from faber because initial stages of TB hip will have synovitis, but as the joint gets destroyed, there'll be flexion, adduction, internal rotation. Finally, the hip is totally gone, leading on to something called as a wandering acetabulum. Very, very loved by the examiners. Point number 18, remember, when a joints get destroyed, there is a fusion. If there's a destruction of the vertebras because of tuberculosis, it causes bony fusion, called as bony ankylosis. And when the destruction occurs in the peripheral joints, it will lead on to fibrous ankylosis. Point number 19, coming to tumors. A benign tumor will have a well-defined margin. You will be able to pick up. This is how it delineates from the normal tissue. And will be uniform in the touch everywhere. Whereas a malignant tumor will have ill-defined margin. And when you touch it at different places, somewhere it will be hard, like a bone. Somewhere it will be firm, like a cartilage. And somewhere it will be soft. So variable consistency will be there. Point number 20. Remember these lines. Single central cavity unicameral bone cyst. It has got fallen leaf sign. Multiloculated eccentric aneurysmal bone cyst. Night pain relieved on taking salicylates. Osteoid osteoma. Large to feel. Smaller on x-ray will be a bone covered with a cartilage, osteochondroma. Epiphysis, end of a bone. With calcification, chondroblastoma, called as Cordman's tumor, different from Cordman's triangle. Most common tumor of bones of hand and feet. Most common tumor of bones of hand and feet and chondroma. Can you tell me most common tumor of hand? Remember, it's not an chondroma. Most common tumor of hand. Anybody? Most common tumor of hand. Anybody who can answer? It is squamous cell carcinoma, SCC. Point number 21. When you have lytic lesions that go close to the joint is the giant. Dr. Asidas, you were right. Squamous cell carcinoma. Close to the joint is the giant. Remember that. First decade, diaphyseal lesion with onion peel appearance. Yes, Ewing's sarcoma. Also remember a trick here. First decade, Ewing's is the most common tumor, bone tumor. But Ewing's is more common in second decade. First decade, Ewing's ko pyaar karta hai, but Ewing's ka dil second decade pyaar hai. It's a love triangle. Remember, second decade metaphyseal lesion with a cordman's triangle or a sunray appearance, osteosarcoma. 
Point number 24. Metastasis to the bone come from the breast, prostate and lung, BPL. And also remember, they are most common in the thoracic spine. Point number 25. Skull. Punched out light ecclesia. Plasma cell tumor. Multiple myeloma. Point number 26. Trauma now. Point number 26. Remember this point. A, B, C is the order of resuscitation of a trauma patient. But stabilize the cervical spine first. Stabilize the cervical spine first. Point number 27. Shoulder has a ratio of 4 is to 1 between the head of humerus and the glenoid. 4 is to 1. It's like a golf ball on a small stand called as a T. Golf ball on a T. So it's the most common joint to dislocate. It dislocates anteriorly. And when it dislocates anteriorly, the arm is abducted and the head is below the glenoid. So down is the head, out is the arm. Down and out, remember that. Remember the test to diagnose a dislocated shoulder. Dugas test. Failure to touch the tip of opposite shoulder. So a dislocated shoulder will be out. So can't touch the opposite shoulder. Callaway and Hamilton ruler are the other names of the test. To reduce, that is point number 29, Coacher's maneuver, Stimson's maneuver and Hippocrates maneuver. Hippocrates is not done now. Point number 30, in posterior dislocation of a shoulder, which is less common, posterior dislocation of a shoulder, the arm is by the side and the head is to the glenoid. You will have the empty glenoid sign or the head appears like electric bulb. So electric bulb sign. Point number 31. Rotator cuff muscles, remembered by the mnemonic, sits. Supraspinatus, small i, infraspinatus, small t, t is minor, and small s, subscapularis. Sits or the rotator cuff muscles. If they are torn in a young patient, you'll repair it. Point number 32. Clavicle is the most common bone to fracture in human body and it fractures at the middle one third. Point number 33. Shoulder, axillary nerve is involved. Humerus, radial nerve is involved. Behind the medial epicondyle injuries, the ulnar nerve is involved. Elbow dislocation, again ulnar nerve is involved. Dislocation of the radial head or damage to the radial head. Posterior interosseous nerve, a branch of radial nerve is involved. Hip, the sciatic nerve is involved. Knee, the common peroneal nerve is involved. Point number 34. Remember, the supracondylar fractures of humerus causes cubitus varus because the displacement is posteromedial. It's called as the extension type of injury. Whereas the lateral condyle humerus causes cubitus valgus. And because the distal part goes laterally valgus, the nerve behind the medial epicondyle, the ulnar nerve is stretched, called as Tardy ulnar nerve palsy. Remember, if there's a joint injury called as articular injury, and if it's an extra articular injury, the articular injury injury is known for one classical point. They will restrict both the active movement. Active is I do it myself. Passive is you hold my hand when you do it. Active and passive, both the movements are restricted. But in non-articular, extra articular injury, only the active movements are restricted. Point number 37. Remember, elbow dislocation occurs posterior. Ulnar nerve is involved and is the most common dislocation in children. Overall, the most common dislocation, shoulder, anterior. But in children, elbow, posterior. Point number 38. Remember, C, C, compartment syndrome, tight cast. There will be pain which is not relieved on anything. In compartment syndrome, there will be a stretch pain. Coming to myositis ossificans, M for myositis, M for massage. Classically, the movement will be lost. Sudex dystrophy, there will be a sympathetic overactivity associated with Coley's fracture. And fat embolism, femur fracture after 48 hours, will present with breathlessness and shortness of breath and loss of saturation. 
Point number 39. Compartment syndrome is most common after fractures of tibia. Myositis, most commonly around the elbow, the brachialis muscle. Sudex dystrophy, Coley's fracture. Fat embolism, femur fracture. Point number 40. Coley's is an extra articular fracture with posterior displacement causing a dinner fork deformity. Point number 41. Smith is again an extra articular fracture with a volar displacement and causing garden spade deformity. Point number 42, two articular fractures around the lower end radius. If it involves only the radial stylite, Schoffer's fracture. And if it involves the lower end radius with the wrist subluxation, Barton fracture. Point number 43, base of first metacarpal, there are two fractures which are important. Both are intraarticular. Rolando, which is only a fracture, Bennett's, which is a fracture with a dislocation. Point number 44. In an ulna fracture with the dislocation of radial head is Montagia fracture. Examiners love it. Galeazzi is fracture of the radius lower end with dislocation of the distal radioulnar joint. Galeazzi is more common than Montagia. Point number 45. Corda equina syndrome is a damage to the terminal nerve roots. It is an asymmetrical motor or a sensory loss with plus minus bowel bladder involvement. Conus medullaris is a symmetrical loss in both the lower limbs with bowel and bladder involvement. And remember one thing, if there is a sudden injury to the spinal cord, it leads on to spinal shock, areflexia, no motor, no sensation. Point number 46, Jefferson's fracture is involvement of C1, the atlas. The hangman fracture involves the C2. Whiplash injury is a hyperextension followed by a flexion injury. Point number 47. Motorcyclist or a hinge fracture is a separation of the skull into anterior and posterior halves. Point number 48. Spinal cord injury without obvious radiological abnormalities, Skyvora, is a pediatric injury where you are not able to identify anything on the x-rays but the child has a neural deficit. Point number 49. Remember, the cervical spine has a lordosis. The thoracic has a kyphosis. And the lumbar again lordosis. Aims, November 2018 MCQ. Trendelenburg test is for the test of the stability of the hip joint. It involves the superior gluteal nerve and the gluteus medius, the most important. Thomas test is for hip flexion deformity. So we are half done, 50 points. Starting with the 51st point, intertrochanteric fracture is a fracture which is an extra capsular fracture of the upper end femur. Its complication is malunion. And when in this fracture, you look at the deformity of the limb, there is complete external rotation. The lateral border of the foot touches the bed and there is marked shortening. Whereas neck of femur, there is mild shortening, mild rotation. The complication of neck of femur is avascular necrosis more than the non-union. And if we compare, when we compare to the scaphoid, its most common complication is non-union more than avascular necrosis. Point number 52, hip dislocation, posterior more than anterior. Fader for posterior, faber for anterior. Also remember, sciatic nerve is the most commonly involved nerve, is an early complication of a posterior dislocation. Long-term complication is an arthritis of the hip. Remember, point number 53, pylon fracture is an intraarticular fracture of the lower end of the tibia. Talus fracture is the complication is osteoarthritis involving the subtalar joint more than the ankle joint followed by avascular necrosis. Calcanium fractures, they are associated with fall from height. Two angles to be remembered, bowlers and gizin. Bowlers angle, there is a decrease in fractures of calcaneum. Angle of gizin, there's an increase. Remember, three more angles, point number 54. Cobb's angle for scoliosis, kite's angle for CTEV, and Bauman's angle around the elbow for cubitus varus. Some important cast in point number 55, 
हैंगिंग कास्ट ह्यूमरस सिलेंडर कास्ट पेटला पेटला टेंडन बियरिंग कास्ट हैज अ वर्ड पेटला बट फॉर टिब्बिया हैंड शेकिंग कास्ट कोलीज ग्लास होल्डिंग कास्ट स्केफॉइड पॉइंट नंबर फिफ्टी सिक्स गैलो स्ट्रैक्शन एग्जामिन आई जस्ट लव इट गैलो स्ट्रैक्शन इज अ फ्रैक्चर शाफ्ट ऑफ फीमर लेस देन टू ईयर्स ऑफ एज कॉकअप स्प्लिट द रेडियल नाव पालसी बिकॉज रेडियल नाव है द रिस ड्रॉप कॉकअप स्प्लिट नकल बेंडर स्प्लिट फॉर अलनाव अलनाव है द क्लॉ हैंड अपोजिट टू एट द नकल बेंडर स्प्लिट फिगर ऑफ एट बैंडेज फॉर फ्रैक्चर क्लाविकल आई थिंक दिस इमेज कैन कम इन द एग्जाम्स डनलप और स्मिथ ट्रैक्शन फॉर सुपर कंडल फ्रैक्चर ह्यूमरस पॉइंट नंबर फिफ्टी एट डेनिस ब्राउन स्प्लिट फॉर सी टी वी कंजनाइटल टेलीपस इक्वाइन ओवेरस एग्नेस हंड ट्रैक्शन इट्स कम इन द पास फॉर द नीट एग्जाम फॉर फ्लैक्शन डिफॉर्मिटीज ऑफ द हिप रसल ट्रैक्शन विच वॉज क्लासिकली स्किन ट्रैक्शन इंटरट्रोकेंटिक फ्रैक्चर्स और द पावलिक हारनेस फॉर द डेवलपमेंटल डिस्प्लेज ऑफ हिप द फ्लैट एस्टेबलम द हेड ऑफ द फीमर इज अनस्टेबल गोज आउट Milwaukee or the Boston Brace people are loving it nowadays for scoliosis is point number 59 point number 60 remember this is a triangle above the trochanter called a supra trochanteric shortening triangle the brand's triangle i think uh, it's very very important for everybody if there's a crushing injury and it involves uh, a limb so this call is a something called as a mesh score mangled extremity severity score and remember the mnemonic shiva it has four component shock ischemia velocity of trauma and age of the patient so this is shiva total points are 11 more than and equal to 7 points it means this is a crushed limb will undergo amputation point number 62 in reimplantation of a digit the first structure to be fixed is bone remember ortho is most important so fix the bone then extensor tendon then flexor tendon then artery then nerves then vein and last is the skin skin is preserved first repair the last but bone is fixed first remember point number 63 jaipur foot the indian foot looks normal allows you to walk barefoot allows you to sit on the ground satch the satch foot solid ankle cushion heel is an artificial looking foot you can't sit on the ground you can't walk barefoot point number 64 in the knee rotational injuries remember medial meniscus is more damaged as compared to the lateral meniscus medial meniscus right the mechanism is going to be twist on a flex knee the bucket handle tear is a longitudinal vertical tear is the most common tear in medial meniscus anterior cruciate ligament acl is damaged with a valgus force on a flex knee with rotation acl has two fibers anteromedial posterolateral posterolateral fibers they work in extension important the test for acl latchman test anterior draw test pivot shift test lely test point number 66 pcl prevents external rotation of the knee posterior force is used to judge it dial test point number 67 is for posterolateral corner examiners love it point number 68 remember the tendon injuries supra spinatus the most common tendon damage followed by followed by biceps followed by tendoeclis supraspinatus in the books in the books they have given tendoeclis in some books follow supraspinatus and the most common ligament injured in human body anybody most common ligament injured in human body you are right it's anterior talofibular ligament this is point number 69 point number 70 point number 70 game keeper's thumb it's a damaged to the ulnar collateral ligament of the first metacarpophalangeal joint Point number seventy-one, mallet finger, is a version of extensor tendon from the distal phalanx. It is managed conservatively. Point number seventy-one, part two, Jersey fingers is FDP version, treated by surgery. Point number seventy-two, remember the structures from anterior to posterior on the upper tibia, right? To remember by the mnemonic, Medical College Lucknow, Lucknow Medical College, and that's how. You remember the first one, anterior horn of medial meniscus, anterior cruciate ligament, anterior horn of lateral meniscus. So Medical College Lucknow MCL, Lucknow Medical College. So posterior horn of lateral meniscus, the posterior horn of medial meniscus, and the posterior cruciate ligament, the last structure. Point number seventy-three. This prolapse causes backache going down to the one limb called a sciatica. 
most common dispel axis is L4, L5. The lower nerve root is compressed, that is the L5 is the most common nerve root compressed. Point number 74, when you're treating such lesions, remember the plan A. Plan A is rest plus NSAIDs. If not relieved, local steroids. If not, surgery. Point number 75, L4. The L4 nerve roots provides the supply to the myotome tendoeclis. L5, extensor hallucis longus. And S1, flexor hallucis longus. Remember L5 EHL, the most common supply is the dorsum of the foot as well. Point number 76, spondylolisthesis, means slipping of one vertebra over the other. L5 S1 is the most common level. And on x-rays on the oblique or lateral view, it's called as a beheaded Scottish Terrier sign. Whereas spondylolysis is a break of pars interarticularis, the area between the two articular facets, is called the dog with a collar in the neck. Point number 77, frozen shoulder means adherence of the capsule, adhesive capsulitis. Plan A is the treatment. Gradually all the movements are gone. Point number 78, between 60 to 120 degrees, if you have pain in the arc of the movement of shoulder, it's called as a painful arc syndrome. Treatment is plan A. Point number 79, is tennis elbow, there is lateral epicondylitis. In the golfer's elbow, there is medial epicondylitis. In student's elbow, there is olecranon bursitis. Whereas in the knee, housemaid's knee is prepetal bursitis. The clergyman's knee is infrapetal bursitis. Point number 80, hallux valgus. Remember the image, there is lateral deviation of the grade two. Point number 81, in nerve injuries by Seddon's classification, Neuropraxia, exonot messes, and neurot messes. These are the three uh, orders of the involvement. Neuropraxia, there's a 100% recovery. Exonot messes, there is a tunnel sign, positive and progressive, so it will recover. And if the recovery is at the age of rate of 1 mm per day, that's good prognosis, good recovery. And then tunnel sign, positive and starting in neurot messes, complete nerve transaction. Point number 82. EMG is the best test for nerve recovery. The, the supplies, the, the median nerve supply is the index finger, the tip for sensations, the ulnar nerve, the tip of little finger, and the dorsum of the first web space is by the radial nerve. Radial nerve is the most common nerve damaged in the human body. Point number 83, Irv's palsy involves the C5 and C6 nerve roots. There is loss of shoulder abduction and elbow flexion, the two most important movements of upper limb. Whereas clump case palsy is involvement of C8 and T1 nerve root, there is claw hand. The lumbricals, they make a L in your hand. They make a L and their palsy will cause a claw hand and you apply a knuckle bender splint to correct it is point number 84. Point number 85, thoracic outlet syndrome. There are tests for it. This video was shown in NEED 2019 called the ruse test, right? There is Atkins and Wright's test for it. And one more test is Allen's test for the patency of ulnar or the radial artery. Point number 86, osteoarthritis classically involved the DIP. First carpomatic carpal joint is very commonly involved in the hand. Knee is very commonly involved. So is the medial compartment of knee. It causes genu varum, makes a O between the legs. And in OA, remember, quadriceps is the most commonly wasted muscle. In osteoarthritis of knee, if there is a limitation of activities of daily living, then if the patient is less than 60, you correct the deformity called as high tibial osteotomy. And if the age is more than equal to 60, you do a total knee replacement. Point number 87, DIP spared. MC is most common involved. Which disease? Good, rheumatoid arthritis. In knee, there is genu valgum. In the hand, in RA, you have swan neck deformity, you have boutonniere deformity, and you have ulna deviation of the fingers. Examiners just love the clinical scenario of RA. Young female, bilateral hand pain, morning stiffness, think of RA. Whereas young man, low back ache, sacroiliitis, with reduced chest expansion, think about ankylosing spondylitis, bamboo spine, dagger sign, trolley track sign, important things to be imprinted in your brain for ankylosing spondylitis, neuropathic joints, also called as a charcoal joint. There's a loss of proprioceptive fibers, 
is seen in diabetes mellitus involving the midfoot joints. Point number 90, gout. It involves the first metasophalangeal joint, uric acid crystals, which are negatively birefringent and needle-shaped. Point number 91, in rickets, there's a widening near the joints. In scurvy, there's a whitening called as white line of Frankel. At the bony ends or the epiphyses will be encircled while called as the Wimberger ring sign. Point number 92, in hyperparathyroidism, the bones are hollow. There is brown tumor, light thick cavities filled with blood. Blood degradation products gives it a brown color. Or there are salt pepper skull. Very, very important. Point number 93, rugger jersey spine is a feature of CRF. Chronic renal failure more than osteopetrosis. Point number 94, in osteoporosis, DEXA scan is done. If the T-score is less than minus 2.5, you diagnose it to be osteoporosis. In osteoporosis, if you have to do screening, you do it in females more than 65 years of age. Codfish vertebra are classical. And remember, codfish vertebra are more common in osteoporosis than osteomalacia. Point number 95, pagets is an osteoclast defect. Pelvis is the most commonly affected bone. Pain is the commonest symptom. Ivory vertebra, completely white vertebra is seen as pagets. And so is the cotton wool skull. In osteopetrosis, which is again an osteoclast defect, you have rugger jersey spine and you is absent of the medullary canal, giving it a marble bone appearance. Point number 97, osteogenesis imperfecta is a collagen 1 defect. Point number 98, in pediatric orthopedics, at birth, in movements at the joint and there is a shortening of the limb, limitation of abduction and rotation, you have to think about developmental dysplasia of hip where you have Orto Lani test and Barlow's test. If you have four to eight year old child with limitation of abduction and rotation, painless limb, think of AVN of the femoral epiphysis called as Perthes disease. And if you have a child at adolescence, 11 to 20, limitation of abduction and rotation associated with hormonal defects or hypothyroidism, slipped capital femoral epiphysis. Point number 99, Klippel Field Syndrome. There is short web neck. There is restricted neck movement, low posterior hairline. It is failure of segmentation of the cervical vertebra. And point number 100, CTV or club foot is one of the commonest foot anomalies. It's more common in males. Most common variety is idiopathic. Age is used to treat it. Pirani scoring is very, very important. So dear friends, these are the 100 points I could think of. I will again be meeting you on 9th of April. I could think of these things if I have to revise myself. Obviously, this video is going to be there on you for YouTube. I wish that all of you hold your calm in the next 28 days. These are the days which will be remembered throughout your life. How you deal them will decide how well you live. You are doing it for your career. What is at stake? Do you know what is at stake? Your whole life. It's really worth it. Who says it is not? You know, at the end of 25, 30 years, Will you like to say that I am not doing something I just wanted to do? I wish I was so focused at this time. As I classically say, Teri kismat da likha tere to koi kho nahi sakta. Tu shram kara chal bande. Jo uski mehr hui, tujhe wo bhi mil jayega jo tera ho nahi sakta. And I just want to say, Hum honge kamyaab. Hum honge kamyaab. Pura hai vishwas, hum honge kamyaab. And that is what we should know. We should remember that when everything fails, the faith survives. And then you are going to fight like a lion. To dor mein avval aaye, ye zaruri nahi. To sab ko piche chode, ye bhi zaruri nahi. Zaruri hai tera dor mein shamil huna. Zaruri hai tera gir kar khade huna. जिंदगी में बहुत से मकाम आएंगे 
आज जो आगे हैं कल पीछे छूट जाएंगे जरूरी है तेरा लड़ते रहना उससे भी ज्यादा जरूरी है तेरा बढ़ते रहना थैंक यू वेरी मच फ्रेंड्स ऑल द वेरी बेस्ट बाय बाय